uh, yeah, thanks a lot for inviting us. Uh, yeah, we're here, uh, okay, uh, very honored. And yeah, and we're talking about, as Mark mentioned, uh, we'll talk about how we uh, set up our uh, global data catalog within our organization, Delivery Hero, and how we use how Amundsen fit that. Um, yeah, so our title of our talk is Centralized Catalog for a Distributed Data Mesh. So this is the agenda for our talk. So first thing we're going to talk about the Delivery Hero at a glance, what's the, what's the data, mesh product, uh, data mesh and how we implement it how that's fit into a data discovery journey from a user perspective and how how, catalog, how we look at the catalog uh, from a, as an organization. And finally, yeah, we will conclude with the challenges and yeah, our uh, feedback. Um, yeah, so, okay. So yeah, uh, just a quick, uh, so this is the team. So uh, I am Marwan and here with me today, uh, with me is Ozan. And also we have uh, Mohamed Mikal, uh, a software engineer. Um, yeah, so first thing first. Yeah, so for those who might not know, uh, what, uh, who are we and what we do? So Delivery Hero is a world uh, leading local delivery platform. Uh, our purpose is to be delivering anything and anywhere. And we are the global uh, like industry leader with 730 million orders per quarter. We have about 29,000 employees headquartered in Berlin, uh, Germany. And yeah, we are operating within 50 countries uh, yeah, globally with 700,000 riders and 630,000 vendors and partners. So as you might see, we, our like, organization and our business model is distributed by default. And, and this distribution and this like nature uh, uh, and also this, uh, sorry, uh, this is just also like a handful of the brands that we are like operating and have. So people in Turkey might know in Xepite and middle and the Middle East, uh, they might know Talapat and yeah, and also like Food Panda in Europe, Asia, and recently uh, we started operating in Berlin and Germany. Um, yeah, so this is like a subset of we have and much more. And as I mentioned, we are a distributed company and organization by the whole. And, and that gave us like um, a unique situation where we had to rethink our data infrastructure. So usually like data teams are structured at this. You have a cross-functional domain oriented source team that is operating really close with each, with each other, are really agile, really fast in development. You see you have like front end working with the back end with the product manager, with the DevOps and, but, as you see here, like on the two other sides and the two other like parts of the like the data uh, data platform and data team, like you have hyper specialized data and ML platform engineers, right? And they have like operate within a different silo than the cross-functional uh, source team where where the data is actually being produced. And then uh, at the third part, you see a uh, cross-functional domain oriented consumer team. So you see like analysts, data scientists and teams. So the data engineers and um, machine learning platform engineers are in a kind of a unique position. If they are unique, yeah. um, so, and this is like also a top view. So you see like all these domains, data being generated and like the data engineers need, need to be handle all of this. And then you have data consumers also like have this domain uh, knowledge with of the data being like delivered to them. So this, uh, so which kind of prevents data engineering from tabbing into this domain knowledge and yeah, being aware of uh, the change that might affect like the consumers. Um, so, so how, so this, this is how like the data mesh tries to solve. So the data mesh tries to move from a centralized like kind of uh, view or to have like a domain, uh, have teams that are structured around a defined domain. So you might have like uh, like a team like within uh, uh, operating with the user audio play interaction. There is a team or a domain for uh, audio quality. Yeah, there is a team for recommendation and graphs, and there is a team maybe, maybe a team for social attack. But the important thing is that they all work within uh, uh, a data infrastructure that they all agree with. Then they have like the same kind of tooling, the same kind of um, spec and that they agree on to how they share data and so on. So, and also like giving homage to how the microservices, so microservice integration layer or the integration protocol is a TCP IP 
And within the data mesh, there also like there are sharing protocols to like share data and define how it can be used. Um, so, so the three pillars to, to the paradigm shift and the data mesh is moving from a centralized ownership and governance to a decentralized ownership where every team on their domain and they own the data set that they operate with. And second one is having the domain as a first class concern. So you don't like think about the pipeline, so do you think about how the domain uh, and how the team operates within this domain? And third, as a domain, and domain like indicates a problem or a need that needs to be solved, the data is the product that tries to solve issues and uh, deliver solution within that domain. And, as a, and for every product, there is a user. And for every user, there is a data discovery uh, journey. But for uh, but also to think about how that was the scale, what our data mesh operates in. Our data uh, mesh implementation, which aims to, uh, aims to provide a decentralized ownership. And there is agnostic data tooling. Where we are built on, TC, uh, on GCP and BigQuery as, a, as our data sharing API. So just that in numbers, um, we have about 28 business units, so about 28 domains. We have about 7 million queries per month. And we have about more than 480 curated tables that are ready for consumption within our data mesh that being shared across like their 28 businesses. Um, so, and then the core of the data mesh philosophy as, uh, Martin, as Martin Powder uh, plug indicates is that it's a domain driven analytical data architecture where data is treated as a product and owned by teams that most intimately know and consume the data. So we discussed the three pillars and the key word here that the most important thing when, when you think about the data mesh is data is treated as a product. And as a product, there is a user and as a user, there is a journey. So how that the data discovery journey looks like and how we interpret. So we, uh, from, our, uh, from our perspective, we uh, split the data journey as five steps. We have the searching and understanding, so a data hub user has an objective, some requirement to build an end product. It might be a, a machine learning a data model, a machine, a machine learning model, it might be just a must be a report, or just finding an answer for a, for a business analysis. Um, so they go and find a couple of data sets or data products that might fit their needs. Then they move to the second uh, step, which is assessment that they find multiple data sets that might fit the requirements. And now the user like try to assess which one that might fit the need better, uh, which, what are the reliability or have the quality? What is, what is the life cycle of this data product? It's like nearly deprecated, it is new, it is just for, for pre-production and, and as such. Third is the access. So after like we, you may like find like three or four data uh, assets that, that you find that it will be interesting to build your product, you request access. And as we mentioned, the, in the data mesh, the data governance is distributed by default. Um, so you, you request access from the owner of these data sets. And fourth is uh, after you get access, you start exploring and you start building your, uh, your, your, your end product. And at the end, you, but in the end, this is not where it ends, right? So if you buy any product in the market today, buy a car or anything, you would expect there is customer care. There is a way to give feedback to these uh, producers. So this is where our like kind of uh, fifth step of the data discovery journey is the feedback that the user keeps informed about the changes of the data set. They can raise incident tickets for the data, data owners to tackle. So how does that, that fit? Uh, that each step is being sold by a tool or by a system within our data mesh. So for searching and understanding, we have the BigQuery metadata API and Amundsen. We have, for assessment, we have a data, well, we have a data quality framework. And for the access, we have an access portal. For exploration, we have a multitude of tools, so BigQuery console, jobs and notebooks, and yeah, et cetera. Um, and fifth is for the feedback, we, we operate within the incident management portal that when you raise an incident, like it, it reaches the data, the data owners, All right? So how does that fit within the category? So our vision is to build a discovery hub that guides our users through their data discovery journey. So 
we want to build a centralized catalog to act as an intuitive and extendable UI for the data mesh, where users can interact with tools operating within this data mesh that helps them through their data discovery journey. And that means that we think of, a data, of the catalog as an integration hub, where you can have specific tools that, that, a guy, that helps uh, the user through their journey. So as we mentioned, the feedback, there is the feedback, uh, feedback and in that instant portal, the assessment, there is the data quality framework and following the Linux philosophy that do one thing and do, and do it good. Each, each system tries to fit and fulfill its need as part of the data journey. But to guide to having one central, but the catalog would be a central place that guides the user through all, through all these uh, systems. So our catalog is an integration hub and a discovery hub for that. And by that, uh, Ozan would take over and yeah, he would guide us how we implemented every part of the journey and how integrated with MNC. Yeah, thank you, Marwan. Um, hi everyone, I'm Ozan and I've been working with Marwan since last year and really enjoying it so far. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, I will start talking about, so, so far Marwan kind of showed you the abstraction, uh, why we needed the catalog and why we needed a Munson. And um, I will talk about the implementation of some custom solutions that we built around that abstraction uh, in order to make this uh, data discovery journey uh, easier and enjoyable for the data mesh users. So as the first step, uh, we have the search and understanding. And um, as you might probably, maybe all of you are using a Munson, uh, we have this elastic elastic search microservice that is back for us backed by data metadata. Uh, but apart from that, we have um, um, custom customized like tags and badges. For example, we have badges for uh, business units, which makes it really easy for the uh, data consumers to filter out specific uh, filter specific tables uh, per business unit. And um, as you can see in the diagram. Each business unit uh, like materialize and update their data uh, assets into our data infrastructure uh, platform. Uh, data, again, data in this case, and from there we extract this this metadata into Amundsen and uh, make it available for every data mesh user. One important thing to note here is uh, for us, BigQuery metadata API is the source of truth. So, which uh, this means that. Uh, for some reason, if data catalog for us is down or if there's any bug or any fault deployment and so on, um, we still have the metadata in data hub and BigQuery so that uh, we lose nothing. And uh, um, every, every time we can um, re like recover the data easily. Um, so, uh, so the, and also, as I mentioned, we have some custom sol solutions apart from this elastic search. Uh, for example, in order to uh, show the users the popular resources, like in tables in this case, and frequent users of each table, uh, we are extracting bigger logs. And uh, for that, each business must have, have their own GCP projects. And from there, using a log router, we extract those logs into a log bucket uh, in our project. And from there, we use uh, a Munson extractor to um, uh, ingest this usage data so that we have we can show which tables are most frequently queried or which uh, users are the frequent users of a of any table. Uh, this was a uh, one of the big features that we have integrated into our catalog. And the next step is uh, the assess assessment. Um, so uh, as assessment, one of the big components of uh, assessing data is, of course, the data quality. And in order to surface the data quality, uh, we have integrated uh, this, um, actually, as of now, I think it's the latest RFC, this uh, table uh, checks front end component. And uh, we have integrated into our system using a custom client to show a summarized uh, show the summarized quality checks for each business unit. And the, on the right, you can see the screenshot is like all 10 checks passed. Uh, of course, with a failed test, we also indicate that and the, we show the late, uh, what, what time that the check is run. And also we're cons consolidating the summarized uh, view 
uh, with a custom data quality dash dashboard. So when the user cl clicks on the see more checks button, uh, they are, um, we show this the quality da dashboard and we have custom uh, metrics uh, like as you can see this completeness correctness uniqueness validity and uh, it uh, they have a different meaning for each business unit and uh, users users can also filter out the business unit or any table that um, they want to see from this dash dashboard and the next step um, as um, part of the assessment is a data preview so uh, again we ha we have a custom data uh, uh, preview client and uh, we are uh, um, again using the base um, preview client of Amundsen, but we've customized it in a way that for us uh, we have two types of um, data source on the on Amundsen, so they can be both tables but also views. And for tables, we are using the uh, BigQuery Preview API, which is which costs nothing and pretty straightforward to use, uh, just passing the the location of the data basically and we can get the preview of the data but for views we we had to implement a heuristic like customized heuristic in order to avoid scanning petabytes of data so uh we we have a heuristic to run a query um, a filter one day of data using partition columns so that we scan less less data and it was also one of the biggest um uh, features that we've worked recently. Uh, so data preview, of course, allows the data consumers to take a quick glance and see, like also to visualize the data better uh, so that, yeah, they know what they will get basically after the uh, access flow. And uh, one, again, important thing to note is that we are not showing any PII. Uh, as you might know, uh, it's the GDPR uh, laws in the EU and Germany is quite strict. And uh, we have a separate, PII access flow managed by our comp compliance team. So, um, and in the next step, you uh, you will see how access flow works um, for our catalog users. So they can, uh, we actually leverage the uh, notice feature of Amundsen here to put this quick link uh, um, to request access for any table. And as one, my one mentioned, uh, we have an access portal that users are redirected to uh, when they click this button. And um, uh, as part of the um, data mesh principle, we, we decentralize the data governance. So each business unit manages the access of their data sets by themselves. So uh, when the user create a request, uh, each business unit are um, notified and they, they take it from there. Basically, and also another thing to note here: the again, as you can see here, is um, we are marking um, tables and columns with PII badges if they have any sensitive data, uh, so that the users will uh, know uh, uh, which access flow they need to follow to get access to this table. And as the yeah, as the next step, we uh, we have explore exploration and feedback. So. Uh, for exploration, we are using the uh, uh, table profile front-end configuration of, again, a built-in in, into Amundsen. And uh, with this, we can add uh, this explore link to each table uh, detail page. And when they click, when the data mesh users click this link, they are uh, redirected to the BigQuery console. And from there, with just one click, they can start querying the data right away and actually the uh, actually see the data itself and um, yeah I actually at this point the happy path uh, so-called happy path is completed and they can start querying the data but what if they they see an issue uh, or an expected result in the data uh, for this purpose uh, we have the feedback step and we are planning to integrate our existing uh, incident management framework uh, that we have uh, in Delivery Hero into catalog as well. And uh, we are uh, also it's al already planned and uh, we will be adding this feature soon um, into catalog. And uh, yeah, and next, uh, I think Marwan will take over again and talk about some challenges that we faced so far using Amundsen and give some feedback. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Ozan. So yeah, as you as you see, like as Ozan uh, went through our integration, that we think about 
uh, the Amazon and the catalog as a discovery hub and an integration like framework. Um, but yeah, but as with every software, there are challenges, right? And our challenges come from the fact that we are we are operating within like data hub and the data mesh paradigm. And the issue is becomes that there are two different worlds uh, between uh, like the data mesh and and Amazon, or like how that metadata or particular metadata is being thought of. So in the data mesh, the first class concern is the uh, in the is the domain. So when you think about like what is the first entry point when you go into the data mesh, you think what am domain I'm operating on? What is what is the domain? What is the data product? What is the data product domain that is we are searching in? Um, which is this which becomes very interesting when you think of these two two different worlds and how we can connect them. So and also to kind of visualize it and kind of give a little example about that, what, what we mean by a domain or a domain metadata. Think about like we have about 28 units, we have like a lot of teams. Let's think about like, like a financial team. So we have financial teams, as we mentioned, we have about 50 countries we are operating in. So the financial glossary or the financial like definition in like let's say Germany or in Europe might be very different than that one we're operating in Middle East or for Korea. And within this domain, there are like keep like different KPIs. So different teams that the, so that financial team, the marketing team has different KPIs either they are tracking and they are being reused in all most of their different uh, data products and data assets. And within also like with multiple domains, there is there is a there is a they are operating within the business, within the organization, where also there is a domain, that there is a bigger domain that you're operating in. So say for a, um, there is a KPI or glossary def or definition that's being used with for all business units and with all teams. So that's how, what one of the, what the main challenges when we are operating or like spinning up a centralized catalog for a data mesh. And so it was integrating a business in the glossary business unit domain and specific documentation like external links for the business units and the one that who operate or own this domain, the Slack channel for asking more questions and stuff. And third is search and browsing based on the domain. So if you want to start like filtering out business based on a domain or yeah, and things like this or searching for domains or business units or teams that are operating within uh, from that from Amazon. But yeah, we kind of had a workaround around that. So our solution regarding on how like we're going to connect this two world is using like table budget. So we have, so on the left, you see here, there is a table metadata that's operating and maintained by Amazon. And around it, there is all the metadata entities within uh, that connected to a table, who owns it, uh, what are the field description, the data quality of this table. And on the left, you see the domain metadata. So there are be like, teams will be able to define specific and contain their domain specific knowledge about their KPIs, their like um, some documentation that might fit like more than one, uh, more than one table. And what that, and what that helped is that the user was able to understand the data set using Evanson, but they would also understand the domain and the context on which these data sets were created. And that's so. That's from a user perspective, from a consumer perspective. From a producer perspective, a domain owner can define specific knowledge in the table, so they are not like created just for a table a data set. And also, domain owners can collaborate on on organization-wide definitions. So when we uh, think about uh, like uh, let's say you like everything with a global point of so an order. What's an order mean? Uh, there are like a lot of brands, so what an order mean might different than from one brand from another, from one country to another. So domain owners can like work closely together and define on like organization-wide definition. And with that, uh, what would be our, our we finish our, I think, uh, most of our challenges. And what would be, and our conclusion is, yeah, delivery hero will have Amazon. We were we have we are very happy what we have been building, and I think our organization, uh, like most of our data users, are really uh, appreciate of the work that Amazon have done through, through the years and how like they kind of uh, yeah allowed us to 
build and yes, spin up like a very centralized catalog in no time. So thanks a lot for Mark and the team and everyone who contributed and yeah, building this amazing community around it. And okay. with, with that, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you to the community and thank you um, Ozan and Mervan for coming today and, and sharing this presentation. Um, so it's very thoughtful and I'm already hungry seeing some of the photos that you showed in the head. <laughs> so now it's time for questions. If uh, folks have any questions, please go raise your hand on Zoom um, and I'll, I'll pass it on to you. And while you do that, I'll, I'll kick off with one question, uh, which was around the PII data in preview. You said you um, your goal was to block that. And so is my assumption correct that the the locking of the PII happens in BigQuery and Amazon simply sends a request with the username to BigQuery and BigQuery access control will take out those columns and the response back. How does that work? So yeah, so uh, so for now, regarding the, how the PII is managed, we are working on the, like, the user authentication and the user authorization about it. Like that's what also one of the challenges regarding it. I think Ozan mentioned it in one of the Slack channels uh, like in past week. Uh, but currently we like we have different types of PII uh, like blocking and for PII we block like for everyone. Um, and mm -hmm. you can have get access through it through the BigQuery, but through Amazon, yeah, we block, like we block for that. And for that we show the PII badges. Great. Um, go ahead. I can just add something um, if you need more. Uh, just quickly. Um, so uh, for, for the PII, actually the plan is the we still want to show the preview eventually, but we want to somehow sh also show the PII columns, in a, not show the PII columns or somehow in the UI make it clear that we, why we don't show the, those columns. So that's still something that we should do. Uh, but yeah, uh, for now, we just don't show the, any data at all. That's good. I saw a question coming from Raghu. So Raghu, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah. Um, thanks, Marwan, uh, for the presentation. Uh, the quick question I had was, uh, OK, I mean, the Amundsen, I mean, it helped with the metadata, look, uh, looking at the metadata for potential users trying to use the data. But how did you guys uh, solve the like, or uh, are using the lineage thing? Like, if I wanted to look at a table, where is it? Like it could be 10 different Spark, Hive, or BigQuery jobs to be able to generate like table Z. Like how do, that is also a very big factor on where is it coming from? Like, how do you like track that lineage? Do you have another tools that are integrated to track the lineage of a table or what does your workflow? Like, do you use something like Airflow and a link to Airflow goes in that? Or like, how, how do you handle that? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, and this uh, one of us, actually one of the things that are working on uh, yeah, for our, for on our roadmap. Um, that's how we can integrate the lineage. Uh, for now, we don't have like uh, an exact plan how we do that. Um, but as we mentioned, that we wanted to make to get the lineage from the source of truth and where the data set is actually resides. Um, so in that case, our uh, hypothesis or our vision would be to get the data from actual from the actual database engine or the actual way that is it resides not like uh have it like from uh from like an orchestrator or something uh, okay. but, yeah from the scripts itself that's generating the end table is is where you're trying to get the lineage is, is what is that what you're saying uh, no it would be like from the actual like materialization of the data set itself so when it materialized and the data set are actually there, you would then get the lineage. Uh, if you are, for example, if you are writing with uh, BigQuery, GCP has uh, had its own kind of a solution and a tutorial on how to do that using like the BigQuery audit logs and the uh, data SQL parser. Uh, it can like, uh, yeah, it can connect after and yeah, discuss it. Got it, got it, cool. Um, and yeah, another question. So I know like, have you guys looked at like Ranger or anything for the authentication and then using the role-based authentication there to restrict the PII directly from there, uh, you know, when somebody tries to look at the data through Emmons and BigQuery or anything? Like, have you guys looked at that potential or any other way of trying to restrict PII, uh, you know, data when somebody tries to look at that? 
Um, so right now we are operating within the GCP infrastructure and BigQuery. So we depend on uh, like the table security and the data security feature that BigQuery provide. Um, but yeah, um, as, as, as we expand our data infrastructure, yeah, uh, batch ranger would be something that we can look into. Awesome, cool. Yeah, thanks, uh, Natalia. Any other questions for Ozan or Mervan? Um, I'll ask one more while we wait. And this one was about the request access. I thought it was pretty neat to actually put that uh, that banner up there for requesting access. Is that smart in the sense that if a user already has access, it doesn't show, while if the user ha doesn't have access, only then you show it? Um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think it, it really makes sense. But for us, I think um, that's uh, that's doable. But we still need to somehow um, authenticate. So, so far we were not really having this user um, related features, but um, that's something that we are, um, yeah, maybe we should consider. Uh, and also, Mario said the suggestion about that. Uh, maybe he can also talk about it, but uh, like the. Yeah, I think they, they also want to use another uh, this issue tracking feature, or they are already using this issue tracking feature, which is not the notice, but something else, uh, to, to manage the access flow, which might be more maybe intuitive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think uh, one of the, the challenges also like how to connect the utilization. So yeah, uh, so as I mentioned, yeah. We yeah very happy like we are like investigating that and we're happy to yeah contribute back uh, and yeah connect with other teams that might like facing the same issue and yeah work out like an RFC and maybe a solution that works for for us and the community. Awesome. Well, uh, that that's all for questions. If y'all have any other questions for uh, the delivery hero team, please hit them up on Slack. Thank you again, Marvan and Ozan, for taking the time to share with us.